Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. Does your BMW consume oil? Specifically, does it consume about a quart of oil for every 1,000 miles? If it does, chances are you have a 2001 to 2005 325 or uh, 330 because those particular model cars have the M54 engine. The earlier cars, the 323s and the uh, 328s, those were 98, 99, and 2000 model years. Those ones actually have the M52 TU engine, whereas the later model cars have the M54 engine. And what happened is BMW changed the design of the oil control ring on the piston, which is this lower ring right here. That's the, 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 the job of that ring is to scrape the oil off the walls of the piston so that it doesn't uh, get by and, and actually get burned up in the top of the combustion chamber. And as I said, uh, the, the M52TU had the old style control, um, oil control rings, which were a three piece design. It was actually a, t a, a, a thin top ring and a thin bottom ring. And there was a little sp um, spring in between them to kind of uh, push them up to the top and bottom of the little slot. And so this is the side view of what it looks like. This is the spring in the middle. Here's the top ring and here's the low ring. And that design was fine. That's kind of a very common design for uh, oil control rings. Most of them are a three piece design like that. On the M54, they switch to a two piece design. It's actually, this is one piece in front and behind is the spring pushing that out. Uh, towards the wall of the uh, towards the cylinder wall. So th what happens is this um, actual one piece control ring here here it is from looking at it you know from this angle and it actually these little dots are our little holes for the oil to to get through the oil control ring and drain back down uh, through the piston. So. Uh, the problem is, is that this oil control ring actually wears down prematurely. And once that happens, once you get to a certain point, you start consuming oil. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence out there that uh, suggests that this process happens uh, like almost suddenly. And, and, and I saw a lot of, I've seen a lot of people report that it happens after they change their CCV system for the first time. Um, I can't really explain why that is, what brings that on. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know enough about oil control rings. You, you, I think we kind of need an expert to tell us exactly why that happens. But I think from the research I've been able to do so far, I think what happens is the, um, an oil ring or any piston ring can become unseated. They, uh, they're, they're sort of seated in the groove where they are. And there's a, you know, a, a, a certain layer of oil between them and the cylinder wall. And I think that if that gets disturbed, then your, you know, the, the, uh, the, the oil ring can be, or any ring can become unseated. I've, I've read accounts. I, I read one engine builder say that if you were to pull a piston out, let's say you wiped off the rings, you know, wiped off the cylinder wall, put it back in, it wouldn't reseat properly, not, not in the same way that it was seated before. At this point in the life of an E46 with an M54 engine, I think we're, we've all probably put more than 100,000 miles on these cars, and I would expect that everyone has this problem so far. Um, there are quite a few threads on E46 Fanatics about this, and I actually started one recently myself because I was unclear whether the problem was uh, just with the M54 engine or whether it also occurred with the M52 TU. And uh, according to anecdotal reports, nobody with an M52 TU actually has this problem. So it's definitely the M54 that has this problem. And I want to also point out that we have a specific user on E46 Fanatics to thank for figuring this out. I believe his name is M. Lodi Dark. And he is the one who dealt with this problem for years. He tried changing his, uh, his valve stem seals at first. That didn't help. And finally, he tore apart his engine and he found this problem. His, the uh, gap on his rings, which is, you know, all the piston rings actually have a gap in there because they, they expand and contract, right? So you're supposed to have a specific gap between your, um, each one of the rings um, once they're inside of the, uh, the, the cylinder. And the BMW spec says it should be 0.2 to 0.45 millimeters. And he found that his oil rings were actually 
I believe it's 2.6 millimeters, something like that. It's over two millimeters of gap in his particular oil control rings, which is way, way too much. Um, there is another person on E46 Fanatics who actually tore, he actually got an M54 engine and tore the whole thing down and did a whole series. He calls it the M54 Project Series, and I'll link to that in the description. Um, he's the guy who actually did the videos on tearing down the, uh, the transmission that is in my particular car, the, the ZF. 5HP19 transmission. Um, his name is Jeff Richardson. And, you know, I followed his videos to learn about the transmission at first. Definitely owe a big thanks to that guy. And he did a similar, you know, a similar teardown on the engine. And he discovered the oil control rings on his engine were about 1.1 millimeters. The gap on them was 1.1 millimeters on average, which is about, which is more than twice what it should have been. So the, the, that's two. Um, actual cases where people we know have torn down their engines and they've taken pics and we've seen proof that this is what happens. So um, that is basically what is going on with that situation. Now, there are two possible fixes for this situation. Number one, you can tear down your engine and put new rings in. You can't just replace the oil control ring, it would be nice, but you can't just do that. You actually have to buy a whole new piston ring set because they sell them in threes. On the uh, M54 engine, the oil control ring is uh, two millimeters tall. The uh, second compression ring is 1.5 millimeters tall. The top compression ring is 1.2 millimeters tall. On the M52 engine, the only thing that's different is that this top ring is actually 1.5 millimeters thick. So you can't just buy an old set of M52 TU piston rings and expect to use them on an M54 because the top ring is not the same. So if you want to use the old style oil control rings, the M52 TU style oil control rings, when you rebuild your M54, you have to buy two sets of piston rings. You have to buy an M52 TU set so you can get the oil control ring, and you have to buy an M54 set so you can get the top compression ring. Now, that being said, I have actually located a, a, an, uh, a piston ring supplier that's actually 10 minutes away from me. They're in Van Nuys, which is where I grew up ironically. And um, I've been talking to them. They, they, they sell their piston rings on eBay and I've been talking with them and they, you know, a lot of their customers are race, um, group, race teams and so on and, and so forth. So uh, their set of piston rings for the M54 actually contains a 1.2 millimeter uh, top ring, a 1.5 millimeter uh, middle ring, and the old style M52 TU oil uh, control rings. So I'm definitely going to go with them when I rebuild my car because that's, that's what I'm going to do. Cause I, you, you may or may not know, I actually need to rebuild my car because, uh, during my, um, leak down test, I actually discovered that my, uh, my cylinder head gasket is leaking and we're getting uh, compression loss into each adjacent cylinder. So uh, a rebuild is definitely in my future for other reasons, but I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the oil consumption problem uh, while I'm at it. The other way to actually fix this problem is you don't have to rebuild your engine at all. What you can actually do is you can switch to a CC, you can switch to an oil catch can um, setup. You can replace the, the CCV with an oil catch can setup with a PCV valve that allows increased vacuum to uh, be applied to the crankcase. And what happens because of that is the piston rings here actually get sucked to closer to the wall of the uh, closer to the cylinder wall because normally with uh, the normal CCV vacuum, I guess there's you know, there's a little bit of a gap there. And because the piston rings are low tension piston rings, they uh, don't press out on the walls of the cylinder as tightly as old style high tension um, piston rings. So by introducing uh, more vacuum to the crankcase, you can actually help the piston ring to seal to the wall better. And that 
actually uh, helps you with your oil consumption problem. Now I'm still in the middle of doing a, a test on this. Um, I've, I've already done a, uh, an oil catch can install video, by the way. I will link to it right here. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and take a look at that so you can see what's involved with that. Um, I did say in that video that I would be doing a test now that I have that thing installed and I will see if my oil consumption problem is still there. I'm halfway through the test. I'm, my, my plan is to put 500 miles on it and see if my oil, the, the oil level on my dipstick drops by one half. And uh, so far I'm about 250 miles into it, but I'll tell you the preliminary results right now, the oil level hasn't moved at all. So. I'm pretty much thinking that that fix is definitely valid, at least in my case. There has been some anecdotal evidence that indicates that uh, not every, it's, not, it's not successful for everybody who has installed an oil catch can. But the thing is, we don't know if um, the people who are reporting that are, have actually installed their oil catch can correctly. We don't know if they're running the, the same PCV valve that we're running or the correct PCV valve for this application. We, you know, there's, there's, there's not, there's no way to know because these, you know, I've just seen a couple of reports of people who said that it didn't, you know, installing a catch can didn't help their oil consumption. So uh, without being able to interrogate those people and find out exactly what their setup was, I, I can't say for sure what happened in their particular case. But there are many reports of people installing an oil catch can and having the problem solved. So uh, I would highly recommend doing an oil catch can setup if you are so inclined. If you're not, there is a third option and it's known as o the O2 Pilot Mod. I'm gonna erase this and I'll show you. So this is what's known as the O2 Pilot Mod. That is the user who came up with this. Uh, this is the oil separator. This is the intake manifold. We're looking at it from the side. This is the uh, DISA valve. Forgive the crudeness of the drawing. Uh, so on the oil separator, there's actually a little, uh, there's like a little takeoff port that's usually, that usually has a vacuum cap on it. If you've got an M54, it's going to have a vacuum cap. If you have an M52, there's going to be a vacuum line running to it that comes from the fuel pressure regulator. Because you don't need to do this on an M52, we don't need to concern ourselves with that. Only the people with the M54 need to be concerned about this. And if you have an M54, you have this port capped. Now, this is the intake manifold. We're looking at from the side. This is the DISA valve up here. On the back of the manifold, there are a couple of ports. There, uh, there, there are actually three ports. Uh, there, there are two small ones and there's one big one. And the big one is gonna be capped because on the M52, it actually it used to run to uh, the, it used to have something to do with the EVAP system. So on the M54, they changed that. So the M54 has a cap on it. The uh, other little one, which is gonna be behind these two ones, that is actually gonna run to the secondary air system. That's gonna have a, a vacuum line on it. You can ignore that one. The smaller one that's underneath the bigger one, that one is gonna have a cap on it if you have a 325, and it's actually gonna have a vacuum line going to it if you have a 330. The vacuum line is gonna go down to a little canister it's the vacuum canister it just stores vacuum and then it'll have a line that runs all the way to the back of the car and that actually controls a little exhaust flap so that you can uh, change the the noise of the exhaust so if you have a 325 like i said it's just going to be capped and all you can do all you have to do is remove the cap and what we're going to do is we're going to run a vacuum line to that, little, uh, to that little port, from this port on the oil separator to that port on the intake manifold. If you have a 330, that, cap, that uh, port is already taken, so you're just gonna need to get a little T-fitting, and uh, you'll just kinda cut the vacuum line in half, you know, install a little T-fitting, and then install the line right there. What that's gonna do is that's gonna increase the amount of vacuum inside of the CCV system. And by increasing the vacuum, you are uh, helping to control the oil consumption problem. So this is the easiest thing to do, the easiest and cheapest thing to do. It'll probably cost you about one to $2 to get this vacuum line real easy to do. So that is pretty much it for the oil consumption problem, except for one more thing. Um, there are some reports of people uh, using AC Delco fuel injection cleaner. Um, and what they've actually done is they've pulled off their spark plugs and they've poured um, 
like half an ounce of the fluid down onto their pistons and let them soak overnight. And some people are reporting a, uh, that, that this also helps with the oil consumption problem. Now, it doesn't really make sense that this would help with the oil consumption problem. The only thing I can really think of with this is that maybe in some cases, uh, because oil is actually getting past uh, the oil control rings and, and making it up to the second and, and uh, top ring, what might be happening is because that oil is getting burned, it actually could, could be crudding up the, the sides of the uh, oil control uh, ring gap on the piston. And uh, that solvent in that cleaner will help to kind of clean a little bit of that crud out and it might help the, the ring to be a little more mobile and be able to seat a little better. Um, I, I haven't done enough testing. I haven't worked on a bunch of cars. I haven't seen what works in one case and doesn't work in another. Um, perhaps maybe the people who have done the oil catch can and used the PCV valve and now have an increased vacuum, uh, those people who don't find that that works for them, maybe this is the problem they're having. Maybe they've got a little too much crud in the, uh, where the oil control ring is and that's preventing, that, that's causing the oil control ring to stick a little bit. It, that could be the case. Um, again, I don't really know for sure, but I just wanted to include that in this video just uh, for the sake of completeness. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do, I, wa I, I wanted to do an experiment by using that, uh, that fuel system cleaner and see if that actually helped with my oil consumption by using the stock um, CCV system. But I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to do that. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, maybe I'll do that, but. So that is it for the oil consumption problem on the M54 engine. A big thanks goes out to the entire E46 Fanatics community for uh, helping with this problem, and in particular to the users uh, Mlody Dark for finding the problem in the first place, and also to Jeff Richardson as well. So uh, thank you guys, and I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please consider subscribing. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.